Hello and welcome to NSN Connect and this is the fourth episode of the second series which is focusing on CSR in India and the big picture of CSR in India with the help of a series of conversations with Ms Meena Raghunathan in the context of her recently published book Doing Good Navigating the CSR Maze in India in this episode we are going to focus on implementing CSR projects and how one goes about navigating the different aspects of implementation collaborating seeking partnerships with different stakeholders so let's go ahead and learn more about the intricacies of implementing a csr project and also try to understand what it means to have the necessary skills and knowledge while looking at different csr projects to continue with the topics we have been discussing about csr with reference to the book you have recently launched uh, one of the areas which interests all of us is to know more about the actual implementation of a csr project in collaboration like there would be many partners as you already discussed yesterday there could be a non profit organization there is the corporate uh, representatives uh, would they be from hr team or from csr team if there is a, a dedicated csr team and then how does this collaboration happen so could you please give us the uh, detailed process here and perhaps maybe illustrate it with an example as well Uh, sure sure this is uh, actually again part of the evolving ecosystem uh what is increasingly happening uh is that why the importance of partnerships for impactful csr is being recognized more and more of the larger corporates which have uh, you know large csr spends they are kind of creating their own foundations as they call them a foundation is not a legal term it's it's just to indicate that it's a you know non business kind of entity so they are creating foundations of their own uh mid and of course the smaller ones obviously do not have either the requirement or the bandwidth to create a whole foundation so sometimes they might be a small csr department which may have two or three people which basically will have the uh, task to uh, find you know kind of find ngo partners develop proposals along with them and then kind of see that the process goes smoothly and reporting etc uh, and if it's really small they won't even have a csr department they might be somebody i mean if your spend for the mandatory spend is like 20 lakhs a year you are unlikely to be implementing it yourself you would uh, you know kind of give it to an ngo partner and for that maybe there'll be some one person who is like a, a a focal point for csr maybe in the hr department as you said uh, maybe sometimes you know in the communications department hmm. sometimes it could be even in the secretarial department because you know they they actually manage the processes uh, or it could be in the ceo's office so you know some person they might be given a part chart so it it depends on how also the organization view csr okay. you know so if it is the communications department immediately it would uh, tell me something about the company's perspective on csr hmm. versus whether they put it in the hr department hr department is also done because you know employee engagement is an important part yeah uh, of csr desirable so sometimes it is put over there but uh, yeah uh, you know companies are handling it differently uh, as far as ngo partners is concerned uh, i mean there are various kinds of partnerships in C, uh, in csr uh, you know so one would be actually when you create a foundation you have a partnership between the business and the foundation itself they are two different entities you know the business has its own uh, goals the foundation has synergistic but different goals okay so the foundation keeps social development at the fore within the business context that's what uh, you know is the desirable way whereas the business has business okay and its goal and compliance to the csr law as a sub goal 
so even that is a partnership because when the foundation is staffed by social development professionals you are actually talking a different language from the business so that itself is a bond and a partnership that needs to be worked at and created when you're talking about an ngo it's a completely different world and and uh, you know today business is learning about ngos because of the csr law ngos are learning about business but it's still two different worlds and we still have some way to go so th- that is one kind of partnership but sometimes uh, you know there is a business to business partnerships two uh, businesses might decide to collaborate and do csr together that is allowed by the law uh, or the foundation of one company might collaborate with another business hmm. uh, and you know uh, i will go back to the skilling example uh, in csr at the gmr foundation where we used to collaborate say with uh, i mentioned voltas volvo so you know bringing in their technical expertise to run skill training programs and their equipment so it's not just funding but technical so there are different kinds of partnerships uh, then uh, you know when you're doing csr you need you have to do a baseline you have to do a needs analysis so you might be partnering with ngos for that now you know impact assessment has become a compulsory part for larger projects hmm. so again you have to go out and look for people who do that those may be ngos consultants the big four the small four <laughs> anybody so you know so uh, by nature apart from the partnership with the community there are all kinds of multi stakeholder partnerships which uh, csr requires and of course when you're working on the ground you also need to a certain level government partnerships suppose you're working in a district with all the schools you, you know the the do the bo the education department is a part of that yeah. or if you're working in health you you know you have to work in partnership so csr is a is a very fertile ground for partnerships and i think that's that's a good thing only we have to learn how to manage leverage partnerships well mm-hmm. so uh, what would be some of the challenges which you can highlight let's say when the process is ge- getting implemented for any csr project uh okay one is you know uh, to begin with as as an internal person one of the challenges is knowing what my budget is for the coming year hmm. you know it it is dependent on the profits of the last 3 years okay now <laughs> it's always difficult to get a pin hmm. till the accounts are finished and everything is over uh, i would ideally like to get my budget exact budget how much do i have to spend next year because the uh, consequences of underspending are quite serious hmm. right so i would like to know by march February or March. There's no way you will get that figure. You might say, after all, you have two years old figures, but profits of this year might be fluctuating hugely. It might be a difference of, you know, in some cases of a couple of crores. Hmm. So you know, actually getting a handle on the paka budget, then ensuring that at the first board CSR committee meetings that this budget gets passed, that the plan and the budget get passed. You know I must get these things passed by April if I need to finish by March 31st next year and this is quite a quite a challenge hmm. which means I should have got my budget as a CSR person I should have already done my due diligence on NGO partners I should have already discussed proposals put it up for uh, you know approval in April so that it goes forward or have some other kind of contingent process through which otherwise very often what happens is some companies don't even are not able till about june july to approve the budget which leaves you 9 months so so this is a a, a challenge from the company uh, side and of course uh, you know community processes do not always go as you know on the paper you think that you would like to do this 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 by such and such a day but you can never i mean it's not like a business production process so there are always challenges on the ground there are always challenges with partners you know if maybe even with the community maybe the community for some reason is kind of uh, you know uh, not very uh, there are pulls and pushes within the community as we all know. so one section might want something one section might not want something and it, it becomes like a ground for clashes csr often becomes the ground where the community shows its reactions to the company not to the csr hmm. it's a way of signaling that you know the company uh, uh, i want something from the company 
and therefore csr becomes the ground on which i can easily signal that or communicate that so there are those kind of challenges and then when things like covid happened i mean my goodness there yeah. the kind of uh, you know the field obviously closed down and it it was quite a disaster and you had to pivot very quickly because so many new needs emerged which you didn't know how to handle yeah like we had to we said yeah let's move to uh, providing food for delhi migrants hmm. but how do you even mobilize that you know yeah. in that kind of a situation so obviously there are things like that and then the reporting and you know making sure that if you are working with partners that they actually meet the deadlines that the reports come in the financial reports come in each of which is a challenge actually and then the impact i mean what is happening a bit is you know we getting so caught up in processes we are forgetting about the impact we are forgetting about the difference that we are supposed to make to the community as long as i am able to fill all my tables and formats and give my numbers so you know not forgetting the impact is i think a challenge for csr professionals yeah so they need to really think about impact right from day one i'm sure uh, you know and keep an eye on that Uh, like you said there could be lot of uh, complicated uh, kind of discussions and many complex exchanges and lot of people interaction and things like that uh, okay so ma'am is there any other point that you wish to mention on this topic when it uh, comes to really project implementation and the processes involved uh yeah i i think the important thing uh very often uh one thing that we don't have is when we go into an area we don't have a very strong baseline of information hmm. and we start activities and then when you try to evaluate you don't know what you are actually evaluating against what was the situation so this is something that sometimes we forget to do in our eagerness to start something we don't do a very we don't step back and say today's situation is like this in a year this is what I, the change i want to see 3 years and then i can measure myself so this is uh, something that uh, i think we have to uh, kind of be very very careful about uh, this uh, another point the challenge is really um, when you go into a community the 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 desire is for hardware physical assets you know and some of the softer things are not at the first instance appreciated so if you are wanting to work with a school they would rather you build a classroom mm. than you try to strengthen educational processes okay right so so you know how do you negotiate with the community is a big big uh, kind of challenge uh i the the value is not that they don't see the value of improving the educational processes but you know the demand is let's have the classroom na then we'll talk next year about all of this so that that's something again that you know uh, i i think csr people need very strong negotiation skills okay because they are always negotiating with somebody or yeah they are negotiating with the business which is their parent they are negotiating with the community uh, whom they uh, are to serve Uh, or they are negotiating with ngo partners so they have to negotiate all day long yeah yeah i think that's very important and also you made a very important observation about how the tangible aspects of impact is also you know seen as an important uh, uh, you know uh, outcome of csr so i think this point we'll take up in the next part of our conversation Thank you for watching this episode of NSN Connect. We hope it was useful in learning about implementing different types of CSR project implementation and we look forward to having you in the next episode as well. In the meantime, do subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any episode from us. Thank you. Goodbye. I look forward to be in touch with you.